All right, boys and girls, you know what time it is. Yeah, I get to show you my toys. Hey, I might help you, might teach you something. Let's see what we can do. Use Motorized Presents Cool Motorized Toys in five, four, three, two, uh, one. Yeah, let's go. All right, everybody, welcome. Eugene here, Hughes Motorized. Okay, here's the biggest question that gets asked the most often in this hobby. What is the best motor kit I can buy for my little motor, for my bike that I want to build? You want to buy the best motor? Of course you do. Well, there's an easy answer to that one. You're going to pick from three. You got your top two and you got your runner up. Top two is a tie between CNR Machine aero motorized cycles you're going to pay about four hundred dollars for a motor kit just for the motor itself but what they do is they tear them apart they balance the cranks they get all the wiggle out of the crank the bottom end all of that good stuff balance it they port the jugs they, they do all sorts of work to it and you're going to pay some money for it is it worth it yes um so that's number one number two number three is well you're gonna do kind of what they do now I'm not gonna go into how to, I don't know how to balance the bottom end and all that stuff I don't care you can get a decent enough bottom end that uh, you just mainly you sort through the top end and you're gonna be in good shape okay these little motor kits here that we're buying for a hundred ninety seven to hundred and thirty bucks whatever that doesn't leave a lot of money for quality control okay so they, they put them together good enough. The top ends, I've seen a lot of crap on the top ends. The bottom end, you're just going to have to uh, you know go with the best you got. Uh, every vendor has some that are better than the others. There's some people are saying that they have balanced cranks and they're selling you a motor kit for 100, 120 bucks. They're lying to you, okay? There's a bit of labor involved in machining and machinists, good machinists don't work cheap. So you need to go with what you can get on the bottom end and I don't really care what vendor it is you're taking a crap shoot okay now let's go into something that you want to do on your your motor kit here we're gonna take a look at the top end okay so what you're going to do is you're going to remove these four nuts here on top of the, the motor here the cylinder head you're gonna pull the cylinder head we're gonna pull the the jug and then we're gonna take a look on the inside of it Come on. Okay, so you're going to remove your cylinder here. Get everything clean. Keep it clean there. All right, now take a look where I'm pointing. That is the exhaust port. There is the intake port where it goes into the cylinder. And then you've got your left side transfer port inlet there. And then you have the right side transfer port inlet. And the, there are the transfer ports looking at them from the bottom, okay? Okay, now here is why you want to remove the cylinder on, on your engines here, okay? Now, I'm not going to go into porting for higher performance, but you're going to get a lot better performance if you go through and you clean this out. Get you a small file set here, or if you've got the Dremel tool, they're a little hard to get in there, but you can do it. You've got to be patient, and you want to be real patient with the Dremel tool, because that thing's spinning fast. It'll hit it, and it'll skip out, and you could damage the, uh, the, the bore here. But you want to use a... Uh, a small file or the Dremel tool like I said and you want to grind this stuff away you want to clean it up here here we've got this big chunk of stuff here you've got some stuff in the corner and you've got stuff there uh, you can even see on this port here the exhaust port we've got some stuff there and you can also see on this other transfer port here on the other side it, it, it's pretty dirty and it's got a nice little lip on it here uh, you, you, you can feel on your fingernail here you want to clean that out as well using the either the uh, the file or the Dremel tool. Okay, and let's take a look at the exhaust port here. You can see it's very irregularly shaped here, and as well, there's a lot of you can feel there's a lip there. Now, as well, when, when you're uh, going in and cleaning this up here, you want to make sure that you don't have any burrs going inside of the bore. Uh, you don't want it, your piston ring to get caught up on this here and uh, and break a piston ring that's not going to be helping you out either but what you want to do you want to go in and file and take all of this junk out here um, another thing you want to do is you want to check and look for any scratches here on the upper deck here the top of the cylinder um, what you can do is take you some uh, sandpaper 
and a piece of glass or something, a piece of marble or stone or something that, that's completely flat, lay you, oh, I would say get you some 320 grit, 300 grit sandpaper and lay the cylinder head down on it, make sure it's nice and flat and move it in a figure eight shape and take any scratches out. So you want to be careful and, and make sure you've got an even contact and that you're not moving, that you're not applying, you're not torquing it and twisting it one way or the other, that you've got a good and flat and like I said, a nice little figure eight on it and you should be good to go here. Okay, now let's take a little look at the bottom end here. Here's something I want to share with you. Okay, look at the studs here. Where the studs go into the case, there's a chance that the studs could crack the case if they're bottomed out all the way. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to double nut each of the studs, put two, this is an 8 millimeter uh, stud, we'll put two 8 millimeter hex nuts on it, get them tight, unscrew the bottom one, that's going to back the stud out, okay? You're going to want to take all four studs out. Now I'm kind of uh, cheating here because I don't want to do all of them on this, this engine here quite yet. But you're going to remove the gasket as well. You want to investigate the, uh, the mating area between the gasket and the case there. Make sure there's no deep deep scratches or anything there. If there are, well, you, you can try sealing it, uh, but you can only do so much there, okay? But you want to be real careful not to get anything down inside where the, uh, the, the, the uh, connecting rod is. We're going to use some of the blue thread sealing compound on the stud. Now, the stud is made of steel. The case is made of aluminum. Uh, when the engine heats up, you're going to get different uh, thermal characteristics. You're going to have different expansion rates between the steel and the aluminum. So what we're going to do here is we're going to bring the stud all the way down to the bottom. We don't want to get it super tight. Just get it down to where you can feel that it's bottomed out. Then what you're going to do is you're going to back it off about maybe a third of a turn, just a little bit there, and the thread sealing compound is going to take over. That way, as the motor uh, heats up and cools down, you're not going to be cracking the case. One less thing to worry about. You put everything back together, you're not done yet. You want to make sure that your piston doesn't come up any higher than this deck here. If your piston is coming up higher than the deck, it's going to hit the cylinder head. I have seen, now here, this one here is the A piston, and this one here is the B piston. The difference is, is the location for the wrist pin. If the engine called for the B piston, and they mistakenly put the A piston on it, what it's going to do, it's going to put the piston up too high. And I've seen that happen on a what I thought was a quality kit. Uh, so you want to double check. Okay, so if your piston is a little bit too high, what you can do is put an additional base gasket on the, uh, on the, uh, underneath the cylinder jug. That'll raise this up and it will keep the, the piston from hitting the top of the cylinder head. That's a little thing you can do as well. You can put an additional head gasket on it. Now, let's go into the head gasket here. You want to get some extra head gaskets, no matter what kit you've got. If you're going to be riding a motorized bicycle, get you some extra head gaskets some extra cylinder base gaskets, some extra exhaust gaskets, um, particularly with the head gasket. Now, if you get one of the kits that has the cylinder head off, uh, what they will do in shipping is they'll lay the gasket on top of the cylinder head on the deck here, lay the cylinder head on it, and everything's loose. And, and just beating and banging around in shipping, your cylinder gasket, the head gasket here, will get beat to hell. And this is a very soft aluminum. So throw that away if it looks dinged up and uh, has a pretty good indention on it. Throw it away. Put you a fresh gasket on it. Uh, you don't want to torque your cylinder head nuts down too tight. Uh, old Papa Fred, uh, Fred Chelminski of uh, CR Machine, he says you only want to torque it about eight, eight foot-pounds. Okay? I just torque these things down by hand. I get them each the same. You want to run it about four or five warm-up cycles, get the motor up to operating temperature, let it cool down, do that about four or five times, and then check and make sure that they're all torqued the same. You don't want to get, get them super tight. You, you don't need to prove your superhuman strength on this here and, and wind up damaging something. Okay, so let's add a couple of items that you might want to look at getting when you order your first kit or, or your next kit, okay? One, this arch style chain tensioner here can save you a lot of grief, particularly if uh, you're not so good at setting up a rag joint. Uh, a lot of people have problems with the rag joint 
and the chain coming off of the sprocket. If you don't get it set up just right, as well, check the link down below. I've got a link where I can show you the, how to properly set up a rag joint when you build your bike up, kit up here. But this style chain tensioner here uh, eliminates the chance of the chain tensioner falling over into the spokes. You're going full throttle, that slaps into the spokes, instant brake, instant lock up the wheel, instant crash. You're going to have a bad time. So check out one of these here. Another thing that can save you some uh, trouble is the CNC mount for the front. This here mounts onto the front of the motor, and this part here will, will clamp onto the frame. That can save you some trouble. Okay, and a couple of other items you want to get in addition to your kit that'll help keep you on the road. One, you want to get you a couple of extra connector links, master links for your chain. You're going to have some problems, particularly if this is your first build. And you might want to check out the, the super chain that I sell. It's a number 41 chain, but I can you can get it directly from me. It's a little bit stronger chain, a little bit wider chain on the inside, give you a little bit more wiggle room. Next up, you want to get you some extra cylinder head gaskets. You also want to get you a couple of extra base gaskets that go on the bottom of the cylinder. If I helped and you out, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Gaskets. That'll help That's other people help find the well. video. Click subscribe. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. Take care. Cool motorized toy in five, four, three, two, uh, one. Yeah, let's go.